this is Mark Coleman. I'm going to be rather cheeky this morning and do a how-to video on how to expand your bee population. The hive on the left hand side is my first hive. It's really busy, full of bees, full of activity. The next hive along is prepped for a new nuke which should be arriving by the end of the month. That third hive, the flat top hive, has three entrances and the bees on the left hand side and the bees in the middle should have new queens. So what I did is I transferred frames from the hive on the left hand side into the middle. So the middle can take three frames and what they did is they reared two queen cells. I removed one queen cell, moved it across into the left hand side with two frames and I left an empty frame with the hive in the middle. That was about 10 days ago. So what I intend to do today is to go in and have a look and see if the experiment has worked. Hopefully we will have two newly ma mated queens in those hives. Taken this hive apart. Found that the queen is on this frame over here. So I'm going to remove this frame and just do a walk away split with the bees on that side. So I'm going to give them this frame and a frame of brood and I'll encourage the queen to move down onto one of these other frames and I'll take a frame from the top and put it back in here. Then they'll have enough to deal with down at the bottom. These are not really, really happy with me. But in any case, we'll get on with this and get it sorted out. What we have done here is this was the frame that the queen was on. We took the, the queen off, made sure that she was in that hive. I saw her walking around on the bottom. I returned frames for her and shook in two lots of frames of nurse bees and an additional frame of cat brood. Now a fair number of these bees are going to go back to where they came from. Unfortunately, the half cup of bees that I had put into here yesterday afternoon have absconded. They had nothing to guard. They didn't have a queen. They didn't have brood. They were just on their own, unfortunately. Well, live and learn. So that's a learning experience. Now those bees might have actually moved into one of these two hives over here. We're gonna have a look and see whether we have any queens in these second hives. We know that this doesn't have a queen now, so we anticipate one week to have queen cells on here, and we may have more than one queen cell. We'll come and harvest those, and then we'll try and create another small colony. The idea of having these three hives close to one another like this is so that the mass of bees keep one another warm. In any case, let's get on with this. Okay. We had a look at these. So this frame, the bees are starting, the outside frame, the bees are starting to create comb. This was the original frame that came in. And as I looked onto this frame, I noticed something very interesting. There she is. Let's find her. You see her wandering around there, big, fat, mated queen. So that's my first queen, my first COVID queen. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark her and return her to the hive. So I selected the second queen and we've put her in there and tagged her, marked her. Marking process is actually quite straightforward. I actually dipped the paint so it actually had a blob of paint over there. I could control what was going on. You don't want to go and hurt her when you're working with her. She looks quite good. And what we're going to do is release her 
back into this hive. There she goes, and down she goes. I just want to make sure that she tracks down, she doesn't hang around there with those attendants fiddling with her. There we go. So she's gone down. Let's talk about what I've done today. Would this be sensible for a professional beekeeper with hundreds or thousands of hives? No. If you're going to split and you have a large number of bees, sensible thing to do, grow your own queens or buy queens. When you make the split, put the queens in immediately. Done and dusted. That hive will begin producing immediately. I'm just playing around. A couple of experiments here and there to see what happens. We found a couple of things already today. Obviously we have two brand new queens. Working with queens is not difficult. I have worked for, with queens a sum total of zero hours up until today. So it's not difficult. Just be gentle. Get all the gear. I think wearing a suit, wearing protective clothing is sensible. If you're getting stung or you're scared of getting stung, you're likely to do something silly. Now we've moved from one hive to three hives. We have some insurance. Should something happen to one of these hives, we now have queens that we can use to produce new eggs, new queens, and keep our colony going. Barring any unforeseen eventuality, I suppose if the entire forest burned down, these hives would be toast. But it's giving me the opportunity to do things that I wasn't able to do with one hive. Obviously, I'm not going to say to anybody, if you split a hive like I have, that you're going to walk away with 100% success. I'll probably do this two more times and have absolutely no success at all. How did I make the decision to actually split my hives? Bees don't like me here. I made the decision to split the hives at the end of August or to do the split. Why then? Well, end of August is the end of our winter. We know that our spring begins on the 1st of September. Not that that means it's hot on the 1st of September. But temperatures had been increasing, we'd had a bit of rain and I was sitting looking at the main hive and I saw, I think it was six drones coming and going at the front. Once I saw drones moving, I knew that there would be drones in the area, there'd be adequate drones in the area to mate with queens. I had looked inside of the hive and seen lots of drone comb and as I've been through these hives today, I've probably seen maybe 100 drones, 120 drones, approximately. So there are plenty of drones in the area. There are lots of opinions with regard to how you do splits. Some people will say to you, don't use a queen castle because the queens can wander from one queen castle to the other, and then you'll lose a queen because the bees in the other hive are gonna sting them to death. Uh, can't comment on that. I've only had additional hives for uh, some total of 10 days. So I'm not going to stick my neck out and say to you that that doesn't happen. I'm sure it does happen. People say you use big hives when you do splits. Take off a lot of bees when you do splits. I don't have a lot of bees. I had to make a split that seemed sensible. And watching barnyard bees and Tennessee bees Cayman Reynolds. Cayman does big splits, barnyard bees, small splits. And his mating hives, his mating nukes, are two frames. And often there's just one frame of drawn comb and then one empty, empty frame with a strip of foundation at the top to give the bees a start. I took a great deal of confidence in that approach 
and use the modification of that approach with my split. Obviously, I already had one queen cell in the bottom. That queen cell was moved to the left-hand side, so that's the queen on the left. Found another queen cell up at the top, and that one was, was left in there, and that produced my two queens. Well, those queens are nice and healthy. Um, we've now moved brood and eggs onto the right-hand side. People say you need to look for larvae that are three days old. I haven't done that. All I've done is I assumed the frame that the queen was on was where she'd been laying, which puts us at three days for the egg to hatch, and then seven days for them to decide to make a queen, which would mean if we look back here, today's Monday, we look back here in two weeks time, so not next Monday, but the following weekend, we should have some queen cells in there, which we might be able to harvest and utilize. I think the principle to increasing the strength of your hives is to just keep them healthy. Don't give them too much space. Let them fill the space they've got. Stay on top of them. Don't take too much from them. You can't increase your bee population and then expect to be gathering honey and doing I suppose pollination and 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 you can't do all those things together we're lucky in Australia we don't have mice so that's one less issue to deal with this time of year hive beetles are not a problem I found one hive beetle today which was exposed to the two-dimensional technique uh, ran the hive tool over its back turned it from a 3d beetle into a 2d beetle I do have two beetle busters in there I also have a CD cassette in the bottom, which attracts the hive beetles in, and they die inside of that. I think the CD cassettes are great ideas. Beetle busters work well. I've used diatomaceous earth in the bottom of the hives, below the screen. I don't know that that made much of a difference, but initially there were a fair number of hive beetles. But they're gone now. No wax moth, but you're not going to see wax moth if you have a really active colony. Active colonies don't have wax moths. The other thing you'll notice when you're working with your hives is a smell. There's a lovely honey smell while you're working, and that's a nice healthy colony. If you are a professional beekeeper, going through every single hive, trying to find every single frame, trying to make sure that the queen is on, it's just a hopeless, hopeless task. So really when you're doing a hive inspection, you're gonna go into the middle, find approximately where the queen should be, or where the brood should be, pop out a brood frame, have a look at it, see what's going on. Uh, you'll get a very, very quick idea when you have a look at the front of the hive, with the bees coming and going, is the pollen coming in? Um, and when you look inside of the hive, is there, are there stores? Are there brood? Is there brood? Is the brood capped? Which stage is the brood in? I was a little concerned when I opened up my hive today, purely because I couldn't find the queen until I searched in the bottom and there she was down there. In any case, it's been an exciting day and I hope you're enjoying the journey with me.